Mankind is dead. Blood is fuel. Hell is full. These are the first three sentences that you read during the intro. Your last firmware update was made in 2112. From the information gathered, we can deduce that we are playing as a robot named V1, and our location states we are fast approaching hell. During the Great War, humanity decided to create V1, the perfect war machine who, upon collecting fresh blood, would be able to refuel itself. For every life taken, it would in turn contribute to the functioning of itself. V1 was never used, and after the death of humanity, there were no humans left on Earth. In fact, most of them had been sent to hell to atone for their sins. With no other option, V1 journeys into the mouth of hell in order to collect fresh blood via the souls that have been trapped there. A journey made possible through humanity's curiosity and arrogance to open hell's gates. We begin in a lab environment far different from what you can typically expect hell to look like. This is the entry to hell, not hell itself. After obtaining a weapon that has been left behind, you encounter your first enemy, the Filth. These enemies are categorized as Hus. The Filth have low intelligence, are weak, and incomplete in structure. How husks are formed is based on the human soul that inhabits it. The power of the husk is based upon the strength of its will and its prevalence in public consciousness during its time on Earth. To put it simply, if you were weak-minded or if barely anyone recalled your actions, you would end up as a filth. Husks can look anywhere from this to this. The stray is another husk enemy. It is more complete than filth, but will run away when approached. It also has the ability to channel hell energy. In this level, you will find the first boss, the Malicious Face. This is a lesser demon born from the masses of hell itself, making it an original creation designed to cause suffering. The next level is literally called Meat Grinder. Why humans decided to create a meat grinder to the entrance of hell is beyond me. You can shoot the glass floor, causing enemies to fall into the grinder. Later, we see a yellow machine killing several enemies, and we also see blood flowing from several pipes, as well as other machines designed for destruction. In the next area, we encounter the Schism, a husk that has resulted from two souls manifesting in the same space. As a result of the combination, they have high health, but very poor motor coordination, making it difficult for them to aim their energy. This is also the first instance where you fight the Swords Machine. Its original form was created by scavenging scraps to make itself stronger, causing admirers to replicate its form. That's why you find instances of the Swords Machine in other parts of Hell. You obtain a shotgun allowing you to break walls and continue. The final area flows a golden material, although I'm quite sure this is the energy emitting from hell. We see walls aligned with this golden energy, so it could be entirely possible that humans may have used hell as an energy resource. Anyways, we see the words abandon hope, all ye who enter, a reference to the same sentence seen in the entrance of hell in Dante's Inferno. We end up fighting two of the statues that we've already seen placed in the other areas. Why some statues remain dormant is unknown, though they hold powerful energy in their hands to intimidate intruders. We destroy them, the gates of hell open, and we see complete darkness as we make our way down into the first layer, Limbo. For those curious, we can actually unlock a secret area via one of the levels. This leads into a labyrinth where we have to collect skulls in order to exit the area, whilst being chased by an indestructible monster. It's unknown whether this area is canon to the world and story given the other secret areas are mostly jokes, but since it's been added to the terminal, I'll say it is. The monster was most likely created by God, with the power of being indestructible and able to kill anything in its path. 
but given that it had too much power, it was probably stored within a maze, preventing its escape. Luckily, it's the only one of its kind in existence. The terminal at the end of this area reads, Mankind is a failure. Free will is a flaw. Let the evil of their own lips consume them. Then I shall begin again, with my word as law. You will see terminals like this at the end of every secret level, and as I continue with this video series, you may soon find out who's writing the logs. We enter the first layer of hell, Limbo. The depiction of Limbo in Dante's Inferno has those who are virtuous pagans, or unbaptized souls. They are not punished physically, but have to constantly be reminded of the fact that they will never enter heaven. Punishment is not enforced through physical pain, but rather psychological. Touching the walls will result in a technological glitch appearing, and moving into the corners of the box, we find birds chirping through a speaker. Everything in the Slayer feels fake. We also encounter a new flying enemy known as a drone. They were initially designed to be surveillance based drones that would use non-lethal ammunition. Although collecting parts from the surface have given them an increased efficiency for the use of blood, and they have also obtained weapons that are far more harmful than the ones they were assigned with. Paintings of religious figures are seen throughout the layer. The next area is far more intense. After we walk through a segment and then turn around, we see several corpses of burnt enemies. When we reopen the doors, we see the entirety of Limbo has been set ablaze. We are then introduced to the street cleaner. According to its log, it was used to purify city air after the climate catastrophe, but was made obsolete during the new peace, and soon after were repurposed as scouts for hell expeditions. We'll find mentions of the new peace in further entries, implying that after a great war broke out, humanity was eventually able to find peace again, resulting in a new rise of robotic creation. Anyway, since Limbo was not designed to withstand high temperatures, the street cleaners caused the entirety of Limbo to be set on fire. The reason for why they are able to shoot fire is unknown, although when they were repurposed for Hell Expeditions, it's likely this was to be used against Huss, or perhaps they fitted these themselves. We encounter a hideous mass, an enemy that is created when an excessive amount of hell mass is poured into a single shell. This could be referring to the outer casing of the demon, similar to the one seen on the malicious face enemy. We kill it and move on. The final area is fairly quiet, with no notable enemies and a calm blue light is seen covering the area. We find a book that tells us more about the psychological effects of Limbo. In it, an author explains how the singing birds and the false sounds are all reminders of their eternal damnation. The writer begs for Gabriel to let him into heaven to no avail. Another unique punishment lies in the skulls. The blue skulls are essential in the game for opening up doorways, and yet for some reason, the author has been given access to three skulls seemingly at his disposal. The torture here isn't being stuck here in boredom forever. The torture here is the fact that should one choose, they can always plunge further into the depths of hell to avoid the boredom and severe punishment elsewhere. The skulls tempt the author, but they refuse to use the skulls and end up hiding them. We see from the author's skeleton that he chose to perish in this layer. After returning, we also see another model similar to us appear briefly. Unlocking the door, we fight V2. Given the chance, he may repair himself slightly, but he cannot use blood to heal, giving us an advantage. After defeating him, we then obtain his arm, a device that allows us to create a shockwave. Its terminal outline tells us that V2 was developed during the Great Peace, when durability was far more important than bloodshed. Although there was no demand for either robots, and V1 and V2 were both considered too expensive to go past the prototyping stage. V1, the character you play as, was most likely developed just before the events of the Great Peace, whilst V2 was created after. Only one model exists of each. 
Let's also go to the secret. In it, we see a puzzle similar to The Witness. It's a bit of a joke level, but after completing it, we read Testament 2. The person behind it seems frustrated to say the least, as he notes repeatedly that humanity is flawed. Another secret involves a bus fight in some sort of weird lab. This is probably just another joke easter egg put in by the developers. Considering the other layers are filled with constant punishment, it's quite bizarre that The Last Ring has a soothing atmosphere filled with good infrastructure and proper lighting. Over in the distance, we see King Midas' corpse overlooking the City of Lust as he scans for potential sinners to punish. We enter a town where we have to destroy electrical grids to proceed. It is also in this area that we see a giant spinning fan implying that the electricity produced in the last layer has a whole system behind it. Through a book, we begin learning who Minos was. The book describes that Minos was torn apart and killed by Gabriel the Angel. Minos in Greek mythology was the judge of the underworld. In Dante's Inferno, he was stationed at the entrance of Hell and would determine what layer souls would go to for their punishment. A painting of Minos in one of the rooms shows us what he looks like. I should also mention we encounter the soldier, an enemy who if you get too close to will run into you. They're pretty much strays with augmented body parts to improve their performance. The terminal log is of interest with the sentence, it has yet to be determined who or what actually augmented them. Could it perhaps be this Gabriel character, or could it be King Minos himself? In the next area we see a small pool in the shape of a heart. Again, note how this is really bizarre for a layer that should punish sinners, not reward them. Water mechanisms are also shown in this area, perhaps providing residents with clean water, or perhaps the water itself generates electricity. The layer itself seems to be getting lower and lower, and will eventually lead to the court of the Corpse King. We enter a rundown station with functional transport. Whilst progressing, we see a giant hand try to stop us, which we fight before moving forward. There are no other enemies in this area. Everything is abandoned, and only a few empty seats remain. Suddenly, on our way back, we fight the corpse of King Minos himself. This fight is quite intense as he continuously tries to demolish us with his hands. Only the corpse isn't being controlled by King Minos, it's being controlled by parasites. Afterwards, we defeat him and... Hang on, what's that? You're confused? Who's King Minos? Why is there a corpse infested by parasites attacking a station? And what does he do? Okay. The layer's secret level is a dating simulator. Just tr trust me on this. The opening text is intense. It feels like it's taking the perspective of a husk. The husk or soul that's been trapped for years or perhaps centuries writes, Panic blotted out the once deeply engraved memories that usually guided me. The soul is attempting to regain some of its humanity back as the gates of hell open. We read about how the soul attempts to escape only for the gates of hell to close again. This explains why in the beginning of the game we see husk and other demonic enemies on the surface outside of hell, since they were able to get out when humanity Humanity decided to open its gates, and then it turns into a dating sim. In the dating sim, we speak to Mirage, the name is very subtle I know, who we end up bumping into. We both end up lost on our way to school, and Mirage acts rude and aggressively towards us. Despite this, we end up having a basic conversation. This eventually leads to an existential conversation about meaninglessness. Mirage fears death. Mirage fears that in the end, nothing we do matters since we will all go extinct. She mentions how intelligence is a curse. After a few responses of our own, we eventually fill Mirage with optimism, indicating through our own viewpoint that even though life has no purpose, we can still face it head on, refusing to let that fact bring us down. Sure, life may be meaningless, but we aren't grounded by expectations and can choose to live how we want. The idea that all species eventually come to an end is a prevalent idea in the game. You see, 
During the Great War, humanity built machines in an attempt to kill each other. Of these machines were V1 and V2. At some point, humanity discovered hell using advanced technology and opened the gates. The Great Peace resulted at some point just before this. It can be assumed that hell itself took over the surface and plunged the land into chaos as monsters and horrific creatures overtook the earth. Humanity went extinct. Eventually, God himself was so disgusted by everything he had created that he ended up leaving. He just got up and left his creations. He left his angels, mankind, the earth, the universe, heaven and hell behind. The angels, shocked by this, formed a council. A council that would continue preaching the word of God. Minos, the previous judge of hell, now free to do what he wanted without the watchful eye of God, decided to reform the layer of lust. He believed that lust wasn't a sin. Lust was merely an act to show affection between people. His willpower was so strong and his remembrance in humanity so enormous, he was able to organize the souls to rebuild civilization with infrastructure and housing. This was titled the Lust Renaissance. That's why we don't see any punishment in the Lust Ring. In Dante's Inferno, those who were punished by lusts would be blown about by strong winds to reflect the careless lifestyles that the souls lived. The infrastructure built in the city protected sinners from these winds. Eventually, Gabriel sees what Minos is doing and supposedly destroys him with little effort. His corpse is then taken over by parasites, and as punishment, it can be assumed that he was to watch helplessly as the parasites taking over his body destroy the civilization he worked so hard to create. Gabriel then becomes the next judge of hell and the council is formed. The council being a group of angels who optimistically or perhaps naively await God's return. So yeah, we fight the corpse of King Minos and continue on to the next layer, gluttony. Given the acid pits and the eyeballs watching the souls pass through, this layer is a little bit different from the original story of Dante's Inferno, where the souls are punished differently by constant rains of icy mud. Moving on, we find the secret level entrance, which requires you to have gone all perfect rankings in the previous levels. Sliding down a long spinal column, we then fight a creature known as the Flesh Prison. This boss fight is intense. It is quick at shooting projectiles and will also spawn smaller enemies that will heal it, undoing any and all work you may have contributed towards taking the health of the enemy. It was given divine power and hell energy, making it very strong. It isn't sentient per se and responds to stimuli, making its behavior quite automatic. Killing it will free Midas Prime. A Prime Spirit is when a soul becomes so powerful due to its will, it no longer requires a husk to exist. The snakes coiled around his arms are also similar to the original depiction of Minos in Dante's Inferno, who uses a snake-like tail to throw sinners into their respective layers. You have freed Minos. Minos thanks you as he is finally able to get revenge on the angels who wronged him. At last. Oh, Gabriel, now dawns thy reckoning, and thy gore shall glisten before the temples of man. Creature of steel, my gratitude upon thee for my freedom, but the crimes thy kind have committed against humanity are not forgotten, and thy punishment is death. You have to understand, however, that Minos loves humanity. It's why he attempted to repair the Lust Ring in the first place. Since you were built for war, went to hell, and destroy the souls within it and quite possibly played a part in humanity's fall, he can't let you go freely and challenges you to a fight. He gives you his full power and fights you desperately, not willing to let this opportunity of freedom go. When he was slain by Gabriel, he didn't attempt to fight him and instead attempted to reason with him. His patience was what caused his capture and he will not make the same mistake again. After taking the last of his health, he dies and a 
apologizes to humanity itself, as he spends his last few seconds knowing he was never able to free the trapped souls. Forgive me, my children, for I have failed to bring you salvation from this cold, dark world. The terminal data at the end gives us some very valuable information, titled Introduction to Terminals. The elevator rooms you see in the game are not just checkpoint sections, they were designed to transmit data between layers of hell in the form of radio frequencies, and thus would reconstruct the object at the other end of each layer. The first object to be used in this transportation experiment was a vinyl record of the song Were You Fooling by Russ Morgan Orchestra. After the hell expeditions were evacuated, the vinyl record was the only object that remained from from the terminals. The terminal states the records would lure the machines into a symbiotic relationship. What this might mean is that every time V1 hears the song, he is lured to go further down into hell. The terminals, dear viewer, are obviously a lot.